We're going to get in the word for just a few minutes. We've been talking about the D word, discipline. discipline. We want to be disciplined. Remember, if, if I want to live a disciplined life or an orderly life, whose order are we following here? God's. The word of God is the order for my life. And if I want to live an orderly life, then I have to discipline or knock out, put under my body or my flesh. My flesh, my body, my soul, it cannot run me. Because my soul, my emotions, my logic, my desires, guess what? They will run me to a very disorderly life. My life will be all over the place if I don't discipline myself to follow the order of God. Let's go in our Bibles to Colossians 1, 29. I want us to make this declaration over our lives. I want to encourage you to memorize this scripture. If you memorize this scripture by next week, there's going to be something special awaiting you. Colossians 1, 29. Good question. You're just going to have to find it. I apologize. Colossians 1. Once you get there, if you borrowed a Bible, shout out the page. Yes. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Colossians. Colossians 1, 29. Thank you, Sasha. Are you all there? I want you to look at it in your Bible. Colossians 1, 29. All right. Look what it says. Whereunto I also labor, Paul is talking. He says, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Paul was declaring that the word that I'm striving to proclaim to you is working in me mightily. We should have this confession every single day. The word is working mightily in me. Let's all say it together. Ready? On the count of three. The word is working mightily in me. Ready? One, two, three. The word is working mightily in me. Say it again. The word is working mightily in me. Say it again. The word is working mightily in me. Only boys. The word is working mightily in me. Only girls. This should be what happens in our life. The word should be working mightily on the inside of us. To do what? Well, the word should be growing us up. The word should be exposing things that we need to get rid of. The word will be encouraging us. Remember, we have to have a relationship with the word. And as we have a relationship with the word, we can believe by faith that it is working mightily in us. It is stabilizing our emotions. It is fortifying our dreams, our desires, whatever God's placed on the inside of us. The word is working how? Mightily. 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 Not just casually, okay? The word is so amazing. It's so powerful. And it literally, the moment you grab a hold of it, it will begin to transform your entire life. But you have to have a relationship with the word, and then you have to believe that the word is working mightily in me. The word is working mightily in me. Despite what I feel, despite what's going on around me, I know that I have a relationship with the word, so it's working mightily in me. So we have a spiritual discipline. The D word is discipline. A spiritual discipline to have a relationship with the word when? When should we have a relationship with the word? Every day, right? Every single day. And all day long, we can think about the word that we received during our quiet time, what we read, a scripture that, we, that stood out to us. Remember, the word goes for 24 hours. I can't live off of two days ago my quiet time. I have to have a quiet time every single day because Jesus, or God said, Jesus said, one of them said it, it's in the Bible. My mercy is new when? Every morning. My mercies are new every morning, every morning. So if his mercies are new every morning, then guess what? My relationship with him is new every single day. I can start every single day and have a relationship with the word. We started talking on Wednesday night about the spiritual discipline of coming to church. Let's go in our Bibles to Hebrews. Hebrews 13. I believe it's 13, 25, maybe 11. We'll see. It's 11. 
I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Just get to Hebrews and I'll, I'll have you there. Maybe it's Hebrews 10. Yes, Hebrews 10, 25. Hebrews 10, 25. Church should be a spiritual discipline in our lives. What does that mean? That means I need to prioritize church. I don't need to say, well, I'll just, uh, I can just miss church. Well, we got a football game. Okay, I'll just miss church. No, what should I be saying? I have church, so I'm just going to have to miss the football game, right? Because what happens at a football game, y'all, that can happen in my backyard. That can happen, you know, in the alley. Do you know, that can happen anywhere. But what happens at church, guess what? can only happen in church. It can only happen here as we come together. Why? So this is a spiritual discipline that God said that we need to be a part of. In Hebrews 10, 25, it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting or encouraging one another and so much more. Say, I'm going to need it. Y'all, you're going to need church even more. Well, I'm just like burnt out of church. No, you're not burnt out of church. You don't have a relationship with God. Because whenever you have a relationship with somebody, you want to be where they are. Don't you? Whenever you have a friendship, whenever you're friends with somebody, don't you want to be hanging out with them? Why? Because they're your friend, right? When you have a relationship with God, not a religionship, a relationship with God, you want to be where he is. You want to be where he is. Well, I am the church. I'm a carrier of the presence of God. Yes, you are. But the word of God says this, and this is the order of God. Do not forsake We need to be around each other. We need to all come together. Jesus said that I am building my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so if Hebrews 10.25 tells me don't forsake coming together, then I can't walk around and say I'm the church, I'm the church. Then what is he talking about? You're going to go together by yourself? No, that's weird. I wouldn't say Sasha. Hey, go together over there all alone. What would she say? Together. Together means together, right? At least two people, right? If I'm going to be together, I've got to be with somebody else. And so it's important. Say it's important. It's important for us to come to church because at church, guess what? I have a pastor that's looking out for my soul. Y'all, at your house, you don't have a pastor. Well, I'm just watching it online and that's the same thing. It's not the same thing. You want to have somebody that's over you, putting their eyes on you, that can discern things by the Spirit, that can hear from heaven for your life, things that you don't see. The Bible says that I'm giving you shepherds after my own heart to look after your soul. You have to have a pastor. Well, where's the pastor? At church. At church, right? So if I want my soul to be tended for, then I need a pastor. And where is a pastor called to? A pastor is called to a church. That's why it's important that we come together. Am I saying you never take a vacation? No, but I'm saying you prioritize church. You make church the biggest deal in your life. Why? Because if if church is going on, then I want to be there. Why? Because I don't want to miss out. I want to hear exactly what God has for me. And God has called each of us to a church, to a pastor. Someone, a shepherd that can look out for us. And that's important. That has to be stewarded. That has to be honored. So we come to church to do two things. We come to church to grow. And we come to church to serve. We come to church to grow. That's why we have church. Just like I said on Wednesday night, you don't find out what you're good at in the world. You don't find out your gifts and your talents from a counselor at a school. You find out what you're good at, what you're called to under the anointing. In the anointing, something supernatural can be birthed on the inside of you. Well, where does that happen? happen? There's such a thing called a corporate anointing. When we all come together and we're on the edge of our seat, we're expecting. There's something that can be deposited on the inside of each person. The Bible says, if you're hungry and thirsty after righteousness, you will be filled, right? If I'm hungry, I'm going to be filled. So you come to church expecting you come to church hungry to grow and then you come to church hungry to serve let's go in our bibles to ephesians we're going to look at these few verses and then i'm going to give us an opportunity if we're in here to make jesus the lord of our life something some things happen at church that cannot happen anywhere else who remembers the story of hannah hannah banana not hannah banana Ephesians 4 is where we're going, verse 14. Hannah, what what was her story? What what happened with Hannah? Zoe? She wanted wanted 
She wanted a kid. But where? At the temple. She went to the temple. She prayed. And what happened? Eli came out, right? Because Eli was the priest, okay? He was the one that was over that temple. He comes out, he sees her crying, and he's like, woman, what are you doing? What's going on? She said, I'm praying. I'm crying out to God. I want a kid. And so what did Eli say to her? You're going to have a kid. God's going to give you a kid. This is the word of the Lord for you. You're going to have a kid. Did that happen at her house? Mm -mm. Did it happen at the market? No, it happened at church, right? It happened at the temple. Things happen at church that cannot happen anywhere else. That's why it's foolish for us to say it's just church. No, that's church. That's where the anointed word of God goes forth. That's where I have an opportunity to give. That's where I have an opportunity to tithe. That's where I have an opportunity to serve. This is what Jesus is doing in the earth, is building the church. I want to be a part of it. But you have to decide. This is going to be a spiritual discipline. You know, some of you today, your parents literally dropped you off. I said on Wednesday, just come to church. Tell your parents to drop you off. I commend you over and over again. Because no fair for all of us who have parents that come to church and we treat it so casually. It's not right. And I've got kids in the room right now that literally ask their parents to drop them off. They're in here by themselves in elementary. Why? Because they took the word and they said, okay, that's for me. I'm going to make that a spiritual discipline. We have no excuse. Well, my parents won't bring me. Well, then you just believe God. You continue to pray that their eyes are open. And then when you get old enough, you find yourself here. You find a friend that will bring you to church. Or you believe God for a car once you get your license that will drive your butt to church. But you decide now. Guys, you don't decide when you're older and you've gone off to school or you're doing whatever that you're going to go to church. And you don't decide where you're going to school without first having a church. Do you understand? I don't go to a college to get a degree, and I don't have a church to be planted in and grow. That's out of the order of God. Does the Bible say in Hebrews 10, 24, right before that verse, hey, guys, if you're going off to school or if there's a job that makes more money, go ahead and move there. And then later, you can find a church. It doesn't say that. Why? Because God knew you have to prioritize his things. Otherwise, your life will be disorderly. Your life will be out of order. The flesh will literally run you straight to hell on earth. So I have to have a spiritual discipline of coming to church. And not because it makes me feel good, but because I know I need to be here. There's going to be something. See, our perspective gets twisted when you make it just about your performance. You stay fixed and focused on the fact that God's word says it. And I want all that he has for me. So I'm going to be there and I'm going to serve. Because look what it says in Ephesians 4. Look what Paul said. Ephesians 4 verse 14. Let's start there. Y'all have your Bibles open? Help me read. It's not going to be on the screen. That we henceforth, or no more, say no more, Be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. This this is what happens when you don't go to church, when you don't have a pastor. By the slight of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Say, I will not be tossed to and fro. Do you know what protects you and prevents you from being tossed to and fro? Church. Church. The order of God, right? My relationship with the word. That's going to make me stable. First of all, getting saved, right? I'm, I don't have to go to hell. But then a relationship with the word. Well, then I find out in the word about coming to church. Okay, this is the order of God. Say church is the order. Church is the order. And so as I, as I find out about the order of God, then I jump into the order of God. And there's a supernatural protection. Y'all, there's a supernatural protection at church. You know, we were up here pretty late getting some sets ready, and some of the um, staff were working on stuff, getting ready for deep. And so it was like almost 2 o'clock on Friday night after the family night that we left the church. And as we're all just walking out to our cars, it was like we see all of the, these cops, like, zooming, okay, like sirens zooming. Like, no one else is on the street, 
but them, right? They're zooming past, they're zooming past, and we're like, what in the world in Jesus' name? And so, you know, we all get in our cars, we drive home while I'm driving down, and I'm passing Diamond Lills, and that's a bar that I believe is shutting down in Jesus' name. Passing this bar, everyone's outside, there's like three ambulances pulling into the parking lot. The cops are just now pulling into the, the parking lot, and it's like, I, I turn down the street, and all the people are outside, there's this one woman, I just see her like, she's like screaming. It's just like chaos. It's just like bad. It's just like bad, right? So I'm pulling down the street and I'm heading to get my dog from my parents' house. And I'm just like, gosh, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I'm not ever gonna have to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Why? Because I've, I've prioritized the order of God. Y'all, there's something so significant about just being where you're supposed to be according to the word, regardless of how you feel. I was so hungry, my stomach kept growling. I was hungry, I was sleepy, but I'm in the protection, right? I'm where I'm supposed to be right now. I don't care what time it is. I don't care how early I was here. I'm where I'm supposed to be right now. And there's protection. In the order of God, there's protection. In your order, there's not protection. So I'm driving down. Well, then I wake up to a text. First thing in the morning, eight o'clock. I didn't wake up when I, the text got to me. I didn't. When I woke up at 11, I saw the text, right? And so I was like, oh my gosh. Please pray for my family. My nephew was at Diamond Lills and got stabbed. In the middle of surgery, he died. Airlifted to Lubbock and he died. And then another friend came in and tried to help. He got stabbed too, right? Just this devastation for what? You know why? Because if you don't get in the order of God, y'all, the enemy comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But in the order of God, you're super naturally protected. Well, are you saying I need to be at the church until 2 o'clock in the morning? No, I'm saying you need to be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, and not go by, by your feelings. Do you understand? Don't go based on your feelings. God, I know I want, this is your order. Church is your order. So I'm going to prioritize church. I'm not going to be hit and miss. I'm not going to sometimes serve and sometimes not serve. God, this is your order. So I'm not going to be tossed to and fro. I'm not going to lose my life early. I'm not going to I'm not going to expose myself. I'm not going to I'm not going to lose my virginity cuz I'm going to be at the right place. Right? But you have to get in the order now. Do you understand? You have to get in the order now. And when you determine as a young person, God, I want to be a part of all that you're doing in the earth, then you will never find yourself in the wrong place. Yeah. Now that kid, he had come to 810. He had gotten saved before. So thank God today he is in heaven. But his life did not have to end that early. You have to get in the order of God. It goes on to say this. It says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up. I come to church to grow up. I come to church to learn. Into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Jesus is the head of the church. From whom the whole body, say the whole body. Fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. Say, I am a joint that supplies. Say, I am a joint that supplies. Y'all, this is why we come to church. We come to church to learn and to grow and then to serve, to be a part, to be a part, right? There's people in the nursery right now that are serving, that are changing diapers and loving on babies and singing little nursery rhymes to the kids. Why? So that parents can hear the word. So that that little baby's life can look totally different than their parents' life. That is a big deal, right? Every time I come to church, I get to learn, I get to grow, and then I have an opportunity to serve. Just like everyone in the room, guess what? You have an opportunity to serve. You can be a sanctuary host. You can be on the praise team. Maybe dancing's not your thing. Well, you can be one of the Ritz people, the one of the kids that grabs the brooms and cleans it up. There's an opportunity for you to start serving right now. Why? Because as you serve, what are you doing? You're saying, God, I prioritize, or I think it's a big deal, what you're doing in the earth, which is the church. And I want to be a part, not just sitting and pulling on the anointing and growing. That's a big deal. I want to do that. But I also want to serve. I want to be a part of someone else being able to hear. Another kid coming in and being able to sit and just pass the buckets. Or another kid coming in and not knowing how to praise and worship, but they can look at my life and they can see how to praise and worship. I want to be a part. Church is a big deal. Why? Because it's a place to grow. It's a place to learn. And it's a place to serve. It's a place to grow and it's a place to serve. And then as you begin to serve, you find out gifts and callings and talents that are on the inside of you. 
You can be serving. You can be cleaning up. And the Spirit of God will drop a million-dollar idea in your heart about a certain cleaner or a certain um, thing that helps clean or whatever. Well, where does that happen? Under the anointing, right? Jesus is the head and it just flows down. And so then everything you do, it just begins to unlock all that God has created you to be. That doesn't happen at Walmart. It doesn't happen on your couch. It doesn't happen. It happens when we all come together and we get in the order of God. There's protection, there's divine inspiration, there's revelation whenever you're under the anointing. Jesus is the head of the church and we wanna be a part of it. We come to church, why? To learn and grow and what else? To serve. To learn and grow and what else? To serve. Every joint supplying. Every piece of the puzzle, just like we saw on Wednesday night, together. So we all put this big picture all of our little parts make this big picture that says God loves you, he's for you, he has a plan for your life, you can grow, you can hear his voice, you can have a personal relationship with him, that's a big deal. For someone that's hurting, for someone that's hopeless, and they come in this place, and they see all of us together doing our part, being a part, every joint supplying, do you know what that does for them? That gives them hope that the funk that they're walking out of doesn't have to stay their funk, that they can step into peace, that they can step into joy. But if we're not doing our part, then they're gonna be like, huh, what's going on? Like, eh, this is confusing. I don't know what, why, why is everyone running around? Well, everyone's running around because they're the only person that's doing something, right? But when we're all doing our part, man, it's just like a big puzzle that says God is for you. He loves you and he has a plan for your life.